morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the fluff you are. Welcome to Birmingham New Street. New place for me, never been here before. Yeah, I've been stuck in Wigan in Manchester most of the friggin' life. Yeah, I've been to Stafford, yeah, I've been to Staffordshire. Alton Towers and Blackpool and places like that, but I mean, I'm usually stuck a little bit more up north. A little bit more Sheffield way as well. But this time I'm here on a little bit of a trip. I've got a bit of a Twitch meet up with a few peeps. You might see them, you might not, I don't know. It might even be a little bit of a sneak um, thing of my review of what the Mario movie is and also how the food is around here as well in one or two places. Depends on where I go, depends on what I eat. You will be along for the ride. This place had, what, a massive amount of money spent on it to bring it up from what apparently was quite a dull and desolate place and turn it into a nice, big, bright, open, modern-looking concourse. Especially with this uh, futuristic bubble-type roof. It's a little bit reminiscent of um, Manchester Victoria with that, though. But... Looks all right. The train on the way in wasn't too bad. Rocking along at about 125 mile an hour tops. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't exactly brilliant. But then again, it was rumbling and it did have a bit of a, a shudder. I'm not sure whether there was a a rubbing brake or there was something on the um, bearings. But it didn't exactly seem very happy at times. So there was a few moments where it was a bit rumbly and a bit bouncy. Once you got past about 110, you could just feel it shuddering. By the way, that was an Avanti service that I was on, so I'm not going to do the whole thing of Avanti pulling an Avanti. They didn't mess up anything. That was pretty timely. 90 minutes from Wigan to here ain't too bad. Considering I can sit on the train for 40 odd minutes and not get anywhere past Manchester sometimes, which says a flipping lot. Hey, it's all part of the fun. It was an 11 car pendling, no? Not the Pride train. I was hoping for the Pride train, but it wasn't Pride this time. Um, didn't even see it on the way in on, on the, in the way in or on the way down. So m maybe it's on a different diagram. I don't know. Maybe it's on the route to Blackpool. Well, hey, that wasn't too bad. 56 quid for the ticket. Mm. Bearing on the prices, I'm not going to say it's brilliant, but I'm not going to say it's bad. You know, but hey, that will be my uh, my theory. Is it's not too great, but not too bad. Didn't get any munch on the train because, well, watching a movie and then having food after a movie. Not a great idea to uh, eat on the roll either, but you never know. Probably see you later with some other news or whatever. Bye now. Let's see if this one holds up, shall we? Volume problems all over and sound problems all over. Brilliant. Yeah. One moment. So, I know I said that there might be more uh, coming in Birmingham at that point after I left you. Uh, unfortunately, the timing wasn't quite right to vlog out on the street and have other people involved um just didn't feel right and it just wasn't the right vibe too many people around very noisy environments and everything um so that didn't happen so luckily with the sound messing up whilst i was on the way home on the train that um hasn't lost any issues that's not lost anything major um it's just caused me more of a headache because i've got to try and remember what i covered whilst i was on the train um, unfortunately I cannot recover the sound everything just got mute don't know why whether it was this whether it was because I had I might have it might still have been connected to one of my earphones I don't know um, but that didn't uh, record properly on sound uh, so I've lost that bit um, with the movie, I'm going to say the movie was brilliant. Uh, I'm going to give it a marking later. Uh, but 
for what it was, for like the animatedness and everything, it was all really good. The start of it was pretty funny. It's not like the puns and things. Um, bits and pieces in there with like Bowser landing in like, you know, the, the ice. I think it's like the Ice Kingdom or the Snowy Kingdom. I don't know. Don't really know much about Mario, so I am an outsider on this. I only know a little, little bit in that. I wasn't ever really a Mario kid. I was born on the Sonic side, but I mean, for the sakes of going watching a movie and seeing something different, this was good. Um, I'm not going to go into massive detail with everything, um, but my overall feeling is it was pretty good. Um, you know, the music that they had, there was obviously bits from the Mario stuff, so like Mario tunes in there, like the start-up um, theme to it, and the Mario's theme, there was, I think, possibly a Bowser theme in there, which had been rehashed, and a few other things. Um, obviously, there was, like, the level-ending um, theme, you know, like, jump to the flag and slap down the flag poly bit. Obviously there was that and a few other bits and pieces and uh, music choices all over for kind of like some of the like 80s and 90s ish music. It's pretty good. Um, Bonnie Tyler's rendition of Need a Hero. Not sure if it is a, t a newer version, but it sounded a little bit closer to how her voice sounds now. It sounds a little more scratched than it did prior but then again I don't really know because the only versions of that I've ever heard are the more polished up versions so I, I could be talking complete horse poopy on that one I don't really know um you know the the storyline with the brothers with like Mario and Luigi being kind of like losers leaving a steady job building their own trying to build their own empire and everything and then going off and trying to um, save the district, um, save Brooklyn, and then they end up finding the, the way down into like, an, an under chasm, following some pipes, and then they get sucked through the magic pipe into the kingdoms. And they get split up, obviously, they have to fight their way through. Um, Peach, as a character, I don't really know a lot about the characters, obviously, um, but as a character, there was a little something there, but then it seemed quite numb. As a few members of the the group did say, it did seem like there was a bit of an overcorrection on from making her too girly to making her a little bit more kind of like pally pally kickassy sort of thing. Might not have worked in there, but it was okay. Having but my other thing is. All I know of Mario was always going to be the Charles Martinet voice of Mario. So having Chris Pratt do it did seem a little bit alien, but it was good. It was good. It grew on me. Charles Martinet is in... There he is in another character. Um, spoiler! If you don't want to hear it. Charles Martinet is Mario Luigi's father. Okay, you're clear to come back now. <laughs> Um, but other than that, um, everything else seemed okay. Having Jack Black as Bowser, yes, it um that works. You know, and he you could tell he must have been having so much fun with that voice and doing that character because he was flowing with it. It seemed like he would have been flowing with that one. Um, I didn't realise that there was ever going to be the little moment, but kind of like, you know, the peaches, peaches, I love you, peaches, will you marry me? <laughs> really, after he's got the superstar, as he calls it, um, and then takes on the other things. And then, it was quite funny, but I don't know a lot about the characters, as I've said, so um, it might have been a bit stupid but other than that it was actually quite funny um like you know having donkey kong and all of that lot in there and having donkey kong come out and do his pet flex things like that in the battle scene and you know mario having to prove himself to peach that he's worthy of going on an adventure and things like that and there was a few things in there like there's characters from all sorts of, of the games callbacks to multiple games 
Uh, all, all the power, loads of power ups. Rainbow Road, you know, with the, the carts and everything. It was just a world of madness and mayhem. I'm going to say four stars, could be verging on four and a half stars, but I'm going to close to the four stars because I don't really know. I might have to watch it again to get another feeling of it. So moving away from that on to the food. Now the food, we went to a place called the Bodega, um, which was a Mexican restaurant. So that was quite an, um, an enjoyable thing. The staff were very accommodating and um, gave us plenty of time to uh, order up and things um, whilst we was going through everything. Um, so my, my takes on it is, personally for me next time, don't be so ambitious with trying to order something so big. <laughs> Because um, I ordered the Mexican chicken, which was half a chicken with Mexican spices and other things uh, across it. Now, lordy lordy, there was a lot of chicken. There was a lot of chicken. So I think next time, if I was to go back there, or next time I do any of these things, um, try not to be so ambitious with it. Um, the, you know, the dessert that I had was churros. I had a small portion of churros um, rather than a large because I kind of had a feeling that a large was going to be a little too ambitious again. So I learnt my lesson after eating the chicken. But the food was brilliant. Um, well, for my personal tastes anyway, the food was brilliant. Um, the rest of the group thought that their food was pretty fair, um, pretty okay, pretty good. Uh, the environment in there it was very loud, so I didn't he have my hearing aid with me. Um, it was. You know, we were in there for a good two hours, two and a half hours uh, after the movie. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, drinks were flowing from some people, not not a lot of alcohol. Um, I didn't have too many drinks either because I wasn't exactly going to come home sloshed. It's not pleasant travelling on the trains uh, on the way back doing that. Would I go back to Bodega again? Yes, I would. Um, it did seem really nice. It did seem good in there. Um, obviously it was very busy in there because it was a Saturday evening, so it was going to be um, quite busy. Uh, the price is not that bad on par with a lot of the places that I've seen and places that I've been to. So it was um, spot on with that. Um, would I suggest going two hours by train out of your way to uh, another city? Yes and no. No, because I can't 100% say it's worth it. And yes, because it's an experience. I do have to go back down that way at some point. Um, so, you know, so I can to give a better experience of what it is. A better insight into what it is and how it was. Um, for me, I find it alright because I don't mind travelling to places and stuff like that. Because I'm used to doing that with obviously going to Sheffield and going to Manchester. Going to Blackpool and all of that lot. So I'm used to like hopping on a train and disappearing to places. Because I've had to. I've had to learn how to do that because I don't drive. Um, pricing wise for the trains, 56 quid. Does seem a little bit steep, but hey, I can kind of understand that. But I mean, when the trains are going once an hour that stop there, come on guys, you could at least put one every like 45 or every 40. Onto the diagram. It's not that big of a deal, is it? Just have one up, you know, have a couple more trains per day that would stop there. It might make the juxtaposition of having them running. Um, obviously, as I said, um, was a vanti. They didn't pull an event in council services or anything because otherwise I would have got home in time. Um, was pretty pretty much good um, the service was pretty good on the trains on the way home there was a slight delay but that was waiting for a different service to shifty out the way so that we could get into the platforms uh, as for um, the station itself for Birmingham New Street it looks all right looks pretty good um, the only annoying thing I found was the fact 
that it's separated into the different color zones. So you've got like your red zone, your, your green zone, your blue zone. I think one was the orange zone or something. Um, there's toilets are only in one zone, unless you go upstairs, which I didn't know about the toilets upstairs. Because I had to go to the red zone, I mean to the green zone to go to the toilets, but I come out of the red zone. So there wasn't, mm, there was a little bit of an issue there, but I mean, I kind of understand with the security and everything. Um, I'm going to rescan your ticket, but I mean, it would have been nice to have known that in prior, especially, but it would also be nice if there was a few more toilets in, like, you know, small toilets in each of the zones as well. Not just one big batch of toilets, but that's me wittering on and me being me. Me being a little bit picky there. Um... Everything else, like on the way home, had to swap at Crew um, because the train that I was on was knocking off its service at Crew so it could go into uh, overnight. Uh, and then the one that I got onto was on the way to Preston, so it's not too bad. I was only waiting 20 minutes in Crew um, to swap trains, so it's not too difficult. Um, going on a train which can go 125 mile an hour now. People that have travelled on trains in other countries, which can do easy 200, like over in France and the TGV and things like that, um, obviously, you're going to say that's nothing, which I know it's nothing, but I mean, come on. We don't have the trains that can do 200, and 200 to 250 mile an hour up in, up in the north. We just don't. You know, it's like HS2 hasn't happened for us yet. It's still in London and it's still in the channel. It's on the Channel Tunnel, so for us, that's nothing. So that's the fastest I can legally go, apart from on roller coasters if I ever went somewhere else. But there is no roller coasters in this country that can crack 100 miles an hour. I think the fastest that we've got is 83 miles an hour. So, there's, you know, I've not done that. So it's been a while since I've been on a train that can go 125 miles an hour. So, you know. That's something. Um, but other than that, everything else was brilliant. As, a, as an event, as a meet-up, it was nice meeting other people. It was nice meeting uh, new people. Actually putting a face to their voices. Um, and a face to the, the words and the personality in the words, which have been typed in Discord and everything else. It's always nice doing that. Um, we do have a group photo. I am not going to put the group photo up because I'm going to keep um, that private. Just because no one else was on the video and it's only me, so it's only fair to keep that. Um, I'm not going to do that because if I did put the picture up and then someone who was in the photo said that they don't want to do that, it means I've then got to bring this offline and then re-edit and then put it back online. So I'm not going to do that. It's all part of just being fair to everyone, which is perfectly agreeable and I do not mind that. We do have our own photo, we do have our own, um, obviously, it's up on our Discord, um, but other than that, everything else was brilliant. Uh, I have whittled on for far too long. Um, I, As I've said many times before, all of the stuff should be down below in the description box. If you are new here and you do want to support it, obviously, give it a like. If you do uh, like the content and you think that it is worth your time, so that, that subscribe button. If you do want to share it around and you do want to put it put it up and uh, get them out there in other places, uh, then do share. If you want to say anything down below, please do comment. That has been me. I am going to sign off for the day. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, peace out.